This is 7.2, verifying trig identities. So we've talked about reciprocal trig identities from the beginning of the school year. Um, they're written here in pink. If you don't have these down yet, you need to write those down and memorize them. And then we have our quotient identities, which is tangent equals sine over cosine and cotangent equals cosine over sine, which come from our unit circle. Um, those are ones you also need to have memorized, so start writing those down as well. Um, we are going to use these uh, when we simplify trig identities and when we verify trig identities. Um, so if it helps you for now, have them written down in a place that you can easily refer to them. We also derived from our unit circle uh, Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. When you divide through by sine squared, um, you end up with uh, 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And when you divide everything by cosine squared, you end up with 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So if you want to look at how to derive those, check back in the 7-1 notes. Um, and we are going to use these very frequently as well. So they are ones you need to know. Uh, just start writing them down as much as you can, and hopefully you will memorize them quickly. When we verify trig identities, we are given uh, an equation that has trig functions on both sides. And what we want to do is prove that one side is equal to the other. And I have a list of uh, steps to follow, um, some guidelines for verifying. So these are in general. These do not um, apply to every single case, but most part, uh, or sorry, most um, cases, you want to pick the more complicated side and work with it so that you can bring it down to the less complicated side. Generally speaking, this is going to be sides that use addition and subtraction not the sides that use multiplication. So if you're given two sides, one that's addition and subtraction, one that's multiplication, uh, simplify the one that's using addition and subtraction. That's going to be a little easier. Um, in most cases, you're going to pick the side you work with and you're just going to leave the other side alone. You're just going to carry it down um, with your equations and in the end you should have um, both, your, both sides of the equation should equal that. Uh, once you pick your side, you want to think about what can you substitute using all of our identities we just talked about. Can you factor? Can you multiply? Anytime you're working with fractions, you want to think about getting common denominators. And um, in most cases, you want to express everything in terms of cosine, sine, or tangent. So um, getting everything back to those basic three trig functions is going to be the main goal. And finally, uh, last step is to show every step. You need to show each step of your algebraic process. Um, so you should have a big long list of your equation after you are done simplifying. So let's do some examples. So simplifying, this was what we talked about in 7.1. There's no equals here. So we're just trying to rewrite this expression in a way that um, is like one term or just simplified in some way. So we're going to look at this and say, Cosine, I'm going to bring down cosine because I am going to think I'm going to stick with that for now. Cosecant, I want to say, is 1 over sine. So I'm going to replace cosecant with 1 over sine x because they are equal, so I can substitute. This is just multiplying, so I can say cosine x over sine x, which if you look back in your quotient identities, cosine over sine is cotangent x. So your answer here, your simplest form term, um, simplifying that down to one term would be cotangent x. This is an example of when you would verify an equation. So see how I have an equal sign here. So this means I'm going to bring one side of my equation and get it to equal the other side. As you can see, this side is much more complicated than this side. So I'm going to work with the left hand side of the equation. It's also using addition so I know I want to work with that side. I'm going to leave secant x as it is. I'm just going to carry it down as I work through this problem. So I want to say cosine and sine I'm going to uh, leave for now. I'm going to replace tangent with um, its quotient identity. So I'm going to say cosine x plus sine x. Tangent is sine x over cosine x, and this equals secant x. 
Then I'm going to say cosine x plus sine times sine is sine squared x all over cosine x equals secant x. Now I have a fraction going on, so I want to get a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to multiply this by cosine x over cosine x because my common denominator will be cosine. And when I do that, I'm going to have cosine squared x over cosine plus sine squared x over cosine equals secant x. <clears throat> when I'm probably going to run out of room here. I combine these. I can add these now. I can say cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine x equals secant x. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is one of our trig or one of our Pythagorean identities. Cosine x plus sine x equals one. So I say here, oopsies, go back. I'm going to say one over cosine x equals secant x. 1 over cosine x is secant x, so secant x equals secant x. So I've brought that right hand side, or sorry, left hand side of the equation all the way down to match the right hand side. So that equation is verified. Check. Okay, here's our last example. A little more complicated. Um, we can see it's again, it's a verify a verify problem. So I'm going to choose a side of the equation. I have an equal sign here. This side is clearly more complicated than this side, so I'm going to work with the left-hand side again and try and end up with, um, with the right-hand side. So when I do this, I see I am adding two fractions. When I add two fractions, I want to have a common denominator. So what I'm going to do, my common denominator is going to be 1 plus sine theta times cosine theta. I'm taking the denominators of both my fractions and I'm combining them into 1 to make a common denominator. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this side of the equation by 1 plus sine theta over... Oops, sorry. Rewind. Undo. Sorry. Um, this side of the equation is missing my cosine. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine theta over cosine theta. I'm going to multiply this equation, which is missing in the denominator 1 plus sine theta, by 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. When I do that, on this side of the equation, or on this first one, I have cosine squared theta over cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. I'm going to leave the bottom unmultiplied. And then on the top here, I'm going to have 1 plus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta all over cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta equals to secant theta. So these two fractions now have a common denominator. I am going to combine them. And what I need to do is I need to foil out um, this part of the equation here. I'm going to foil this out. When I foil that out, I get 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta equals 2 secant theta. Okay, so what I need to do, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to reorder this a little bit, the numerator, so that I can see a little better what's going on. So um, I'm going to write here, I'm going to say cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta um, plus 1 plus 2 sine theta all over cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta equals 2 secant theta. I notice here, this is my Pythagorean identity, that equals 1. When I then add 1 plus 1, I get 2 plus 2 sine theta on the top and cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta on the bottom. I can see here I can factor out a 2 from both of those terms. So I have 2 times 1 plus sine theta. When I factor out a 2, I'm left with a 1 and then a sine theta over cosine theta 1 plus sine theta equals 2 secant theta. 
You can see here I have matching terms on the top and bottom. Those cancel. I'm left with 2 over cosine theta, which equals 2 secant theta equals 2 secant theta. So I brought my left-hand side of the equation all the way down to match my right side. So that equation is now verified. So hopefully that provides you a little more explanation. These problems just take a lot of practice. So we're going to do more practice on Monday. Um, please make sure you do those four homework problems we decide or I assigned on Friday. And we will look more at this next week.